Hey guys, David here and welcome to that lot deck. So when I started out with my CNC adventure, I didn't really get how the entire process worked. Like I knew you kind of route something out with a CNC, you have a model, but everything in between was kind of a blur. I only really learned how it worked after I had built mine. So today I'm going to show you from the model to the finished part, what exactly goes on when you're doing something with CNC. So the goal today is to make this little thing here. It's just a 5x5 five five centimeter square with that lot tag engraved into it. Not too difficult of a part, but it's great to illustrate how everything works. So the first step is that you need to have some kind of a model of what you want to make. This doesn't have to be 3D. It also can be just a 2D drawing. Now it of course has to be compatible. So for 2D drawings, DXF is the usual format and 3D depends a bit on what program you use. But the CAD program that I would recommend for CNC use for you is Fusion 360, which is free for hobbyists, which is really great, but it also has like all the features you could ever need and it's used by many professionals as well. For this example, I just made a simple cube in Fusion 360 with the dimensions of my final part. And then I just made a 2D drawing on top of this cube with the text that I want to engrave. I could also just make this entire thing with a 2D square and the drawing on there and then do everything in CAM. CAM is the next step. This is the step where you turn this model into instructions for your CNC machine. If you just send the model file to your CNC machine, it isn't going to know what to do at all because there are many different tools and drills and everything that you can use and you can use different strategies to machine this thing out. But I'm not going to touch on any of this today because that's much more detailed. But basically what you're doing is you're taking the 3D model and then the software says you that there's going to come down the mill and go around and cut this thing out. In there you also adjust your parameters like how fast you want to go and things like that. This can get quite elaborate and is almost kind of an art form to master it correctly. But to start off I just use a simple 2D contour because it's just wood so, so it doesn't really matter what you use too much because it's really soft. When you work with metals it is a lot more important. but. This is just a quick demo. And inside of Fusion 360 there also is an option for engraving where the software does everything for you, which is really great as engraving can be quite complex if you have to do it without this option. But the CAM software doesn't only generate this toolpath as it's called, it also translates it so that your machine understands it. Every CNC has a bit of a different controller. I'm using a Gerbil controller which is open source and based for Arduino, but if you buy like a proper CNC or, or you use Mac 3 for your CNC, then it's gonna be a bit different. That's because each machine understands the code a bit different and needs some different parameters. So well, after you generated your toolpath, you go to post-processing. And in there you need to choose your controller so that the software knows exactly how to translate it. And after we chose our controller, Gerbil for me, and we gave the file a name, we can export it and then here is what you can see is the cheat code. It looks pretty similar like cheat code for 3D printing if you have ever used that. And basically what it is, it tells the machine like turn on the motor, go down maybe 10 millimeters, move X and Y both 
10 millimeters and then it goes over. So it's like really easy to understand, but there are many, many lines of code there. Depending on the complexity, there can be many thousands of lines of code. So you can be lucky that you don't have to write them by yourself. And with this tree code generated, we can go over to the CNC machine. Now, most CNC machines are controlled by a computer or some kind of specialized controller, which is mostly used in like more expensive and higher end models. But like the hobbyist kind of thing, which you're probably going to use, you have a computer. And on this computer, you have a piece of software that connects to your CNC and talks to it and tells each line of G-code after the other to it. And you can also control quite a few other things inside of this software. Now, I'm just using a very basic piece of software, which is free. It's called Universal G-Code Center, and it works great with the Gerbil Arduino stuff. But another really popular software is Mac 3 which is used in many hobbyist CNC scenarios. There you have quite a few more options, but it's also a bit more complicated. But basically, if we, we boil it down to the bare minimum, what this software has to do is control the CNC and like set the zero point. Back in the CAM software, I told the machine that I want the zero point to be around here. Basically just five millimeter outside of the part that I make. I just chose this point uh, as I defined my stock in there like that. But in this case, it doesn't really matter too much. But if you, for example, have an already existing part like this one, and you now want to add another engraving in the middle, this is really important as it tells the machine where your workpiece is. Of course, inside of the control software for your CNC, you now have to tell the machine where this zero point is. So you just move your machine to the zero point. I do it by eye. On the bit better CNC machines, there are some tools which allow you to find this point very precisely with measuring tools that you put in where the tool goes. But it's basically just the same. You put the spindle right on the point where you want the zero to be. And then you tell the software, this is zero for me. And when you then start your G-code by just pressing cycle start, the software sends the G-codes to the CNC machine and the whole process can begin. And it all starts off this single defined point. And now the fun part starts. We can watch the machine machine out what we program. In many cases, this will be the least amount of time of CNCing, which in the beginning I thought like, oh, I'm gonna spend like five minutes coding and then this part's gonna take 10 minutes or 20 minutes. So it's mostly just watching the CNC. But even this simple part took me like 15 minutes to prepare everything and then the cycle time was only like two minutes. And in many cases, it is, it is like that. 
Except, of course, you have like really elaborate toolpaths or 3D, which I don't even want to mention in this video as it, this is something for another time. Now, I hope I kind of was able to bring you the CNC a bit closer and explain to you how the whole process works. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and I will try my best to answer them all. Also, if you like this video, please leave a like down below and also consider to subscribe for more videos like this one. I also have Twitter and Instagram handles linked down below and a brand new website where you can check out some other behind the scenes stuff. Thanks for watching and until next time.